It's Shell C from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my Tag It Tuesday June tag. This is a Facebook group that you can ask to join by using the link in the description box below. And you go over there, you ask to join, you answer the questions, and then you too can make tags every month. And she also has an ATC challenge every month. Um, so the first prompt was newspaper. I don't actually take the newspaper. Um, haven't really in probably 10 or 15 years, but I did have this piece of tissue paper or deli paper that has a newspaper print on it. And so I decided to use that for my initial layer on my tag. This is a shipping tag, um, about three and a quarter by six and a quarter size um, manila shipping tag. I have a huge box of these. So these are what I use for my altered tags. So I put all that, that newsprint on there, smoothed it out with the edge of a card and got that nice and stuck down. Then I trimmed out the edges and went around it with a black pad to give it some type of a border. Um, second step was to use a die cut this die cut is one that you can purchase like at Michael's or something. I'm not exact, exactly sure where you purchase it, but I'll go look and try to find a link. Um, it's made out of a, um, probably, I don't know, a medium weight paper. Already die cut for you. I don't actually have that die cut, but it's still a die cut. So I use that with some unbleached titanium acrylic paint to um, kind of push back the background because I knew I was going to make an illustration over the top because the first thing that I thought of when I saw newspaper is that old crusty joke that says what's black and white and red all over well we know that that's the answer to that is a newspaper because it's black and white and, it, and you read it right but another thing that um, another version of that joke ha is a zebra with diaper rash is the answer instead. And anyway, I was just amused by all of that. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all in my head. I just amuse myself. So I decided to draw a zebra over my newsprint. So having that unbleached titanium layer just kind of mellows out the newsprint a little bit, but the pattern of the die cut doesn't really show up that much. It just, it's just kind of the same type of an idea as using some watered down gesso over it, which would have been a possibility. But since it said to use the die cut, I use the die cut. So now I have my, um, my drafting pencil. This is a mechanical pencil, uh, Graph Gear 1000, I think it's called. And it has soft graphite in it so that I can draw really easily. I like this pencil. The only thing is I had some trouble <laughs> getting it refilled but once I figured that out um, I put new leads in it and now it's in good shape and then I have a white eraser this is the type of eraser that I found that erases this graphite the best without smearing so I drew my zebra illustration using that pencil and then I'm going to use some alcohol markers these are the spectrum noir alcohol markers in very neutral tones one of the steps is neutrals and really that's what this whole card is about because everyone thinks that black and white is black and white but in reality those colors that we perceive in our with our eye as black or white are actually a, a huge variance of different shades of grays and tans and blues and the browns that mix together to make those colors and so I wanted to use several uh, alcohol markers in different shades of brown and gray. There's not even a black. I know that when you're looking at the video, this looks black. It's actually the Earth Brown 8, which is a very, very dark brown. I did end up using a little bit of black at the very end on the eyes. Um, and that's the only black that I even used on my illustration. I didn't make black lines around the outside. I'm kind of treating this as if it's a painting, but I'm using the alcohol markers. And the reason that I'm using the alcohol markers is that I know that on this sealed surface, because remember I put that matte medium on the paper 
And then on top of that, I put acrylic paint. I know that this sealed surface is going to allow those markers to blend together um, really well. And also another unique feature that I was planning on using in this case, which I did end up using um, of the alcohol markers is that when you put one on top of the other on the sealed surface, you can kind of remove some of the color of the, the darker one so it's pretty forgiving on this type of a surface. If you're using it on, on marker paper, um, that's not as much the case. You can't really do the removing thing, but you can blend really nicely. They make such beautiful color blends from light to dark or whatever, or from you know using a pink and a blue and blending in the middle and it, you get a new color. It's, they work beautiful for that on marker paper, but this is, of course, isn't marker paper. This is over acrylic and and so I know that it's going to be more um, scratchy looking, like more like a paint stroke. And I could have done this with paint, but I thought, why not get out the markers and do it? Because I know that I have all these different shades of grays and browns and um, it will be perfect for this because this is really illustrating that Although we, we look at a zebra and we say, hey, that's black and white. It's not really black and white at all. In fact, there, there might not even be any pure black in a zebra. I'm not sure. I've never been that close to one. <laughs> I wouldn't mind petting a zebra. I think that would be super fun. They're probably a lot like horses, I would guess, or, or maybe donkeys. I don't know. They probably have a pretty, you know, mild disposition. You probably could be able to pet one. So if you've petted a zebra or ever been that close to one, leave me a comment below and tell me how it was. I know that you will. <laughs> so I've got some darks in there. I've used a couple different colors of um, dark brown and a warm gray. The, the grays that I'm using of all my grays in the Spectrum Noirs are the warmer side, the ones that have less blue in them and um, our nice warm colors right there I decided that that I had too much of a stripe and so I'm just using the blending tool the blending marker for spectrum noir to kind of remove some of that darkness right there in between those two stripes on his neck and so I'm just like writing over it and then wiping it off on my under paper and that works really great um, wouldn't probably work as well on a porous paper but works great on this uh, acrylic surface so I'm adding in colors into his mane. I've got uh, lights. This is a really light colored marker. It's one of the, I think it's one of the EBs or maybe it's one of the grays. I don't know. Anyway, I'll, I think I left all the markers out. So I'll write down in the description box below all the colors that I picked out to use on this project in case you're super curious and you have a chart of uh, Spectrum Noir markers and you would like to do something like this I'll write down all the little codes now this one is definitely a brown I'm coming back in with a tannish very warm uh, brown color that's not even on the gray spectrum it's just one I picked from the browns but light and I really think that that brings in so much depth when you put that in and it warms it up so much. This was fun. I've never drawn a zebra before and I think he's cute and I might want to draw more zebras. I don't know. So in addition to the Spectrum Noir markers, I also used a white Posca pen, which you'll see me bring in for some really bright white highlights. And I did use um, a Faber-Castell illustration pen at the very end because I needed a super fine point to draw in some eyelashes and whiskers. Um, I needed a really small marker, so I used uh, illustration pen, a bullet tip, size small for that. And that worked well. It kind of didn't want to ride over the Spectrum Noir very much because it had, that kind of has a, leaves a film on there and it didn't feel that comfortable writing over it, but I got it to work, so. Now I'm adding some super bright highlights and I'm just, uh, you know, the, the Posca pen is acrylic. 
paint. So it writes over everything. And I'm just writing a little scratch on there and then blending it with my finger. And that brings that real extra bright to the front. And that also makes a very large difference on um, this type of it, all neutral color. You know, if, if you're only using neutrals, you've really got to think about contrast. And that's where the white came in really handy was to give me a little bit more contrast between the background and the foreground. I didn't want to completely obliterate the, the text print, however. So at the end, when you see the close-ups, you'll see that the text is still coming through the zebra because that's part of the joke, right? <laughs> so then the next step was to add texture with a palette knife. I thought that the zebra might be out in some long grasses. And so I'm just using the side of the palette knife and some acrylic paint. This is ivory black, which is kind of a soft black. And just kind of patting on there on the side to make some of the, the idea that grass is coming up, growing around the zebra. Um, it also gives a texture because of course it's acrylic, it's, it's uh, bumpy. Then I got out some titanium white and just did the same type of a process, adding a little bit of highlight to my grass so that it you can see it a little bit better. And gave that a good dry. And then I went to my printer and I printed out the words black and white and red all over. Um, would have used my P-Touch label maker, but it doesn't have any tape still. <laughs> So I did it on my uh, inkjet printer and I glued that on with a Elmer's permanent craft glue stick. So then like you often see me do with my tags, I'm putting a backing on this, which is good because uh, at the very beginning I tore the cardstock a little bit by accidentally sticking it to my underpaper <laughs> when I was doing the gluing down phase at the beginning. You guys probably saw that, but I was talking through it. So this is just black cardstock, comes in eight and a half by 11, I cut it to size. Then I'm going to punch a hole and put some neutral color fibers in. And that will be it for the tag. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This was a fun project and it's a little break from all the ATCs this month. Just a little bit of something different. Um, if you did enjoy it, Remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below, subscribe, turn on your notifications, share if you want to. Um, due to my recent difficulty with YouTube and you know all that stuff that happened in my channel disappeared and my subscribers disappeared, I really need you guys to do that stuff, the comments and the, and the thumbs up and things because I've lost my momentum. Um, I've lost my ranking, all that stuff because my channel was down for four or five days. And so, uh, yeah, if you could do that extra much, this video and the next few coming up, that would be great. Thanks. Bye-bye.